Hey everybody, it's Emily from Life So Savory and today we're going doing part two of the sweatshirt dress pattern that we started last week and I'm super excited to finish up this project. One, so I can have a new dress and two, just because I always love sewing with you guys. So I do have a little sneaky peek of um, the project that I'm working on this week. It has been super fun to sew and I'm so excited to share the pattern with you. I'm making this adorable bag. You may recognize the fabric because I also made an over the shoulder sling bag with this a while ago. Um, but this is going to be like one of those that you can wear as a fanny pack or you can wear over your shoulder um, with a strap. So it'll have a shorter strap, but it will be adjustable for where you wanna wear it. It has so many pockets, you're going to love it and all with zippers for safety. So a zipper pocket here on the top and that closes with a magnetic clasp. And then it has a pocket on the front side and a pocket on the back side that also are zippered and also are good size pockets. So I'm super excited about this. Stay tuned, more is coming very, very soon. Uh, make sure you follow me on Facebook or Pinterest or wherever you do to see the latest. So anyway, I'm really excited about that. Um, I hope you will be too because it's a cute little bag but can still hold some stuff. I still carry a ginormous mom purse and I don't know how some of you carry tiny little bags that just hold your phone because I still carry all the things. So maybe this will inspire me to downsize my wallet um, and then I could carry that in here and my phone, maybe a couple other things and be set. But I still, I like to put my water bottle in a bag. You guys, I still have a ginormous purse. So I'm still one of those people, but I have dreams of just downsizing to something like this and being free. But anyway, more on that later. So stay tuned for that. So today, okay, we are going to be sewing finishing up the sweatshirt dress that we started last week and we made some pretty good progress. So I think we'll just sort of recap where we got to last week and then talk about where we're going to go this week. Okay, so we're gonna finish it, all right? So I have to cut pockets. I didn't cut those. We also have to cut arm cuffs, uh, wrist cuffs. We did not cut that. But what we did do is get a really good start on the top of the dress. So remember we put in the neckline, we gathered the sleeves and I just intensely gathered them at the top of the shoulder and then um, that's it. So the rest, it, you know, it, it will go pretty quickly here. We need to cut um, sleeve cuffs, we need to cut the pockets so that we can sew the skirt. I have the two skirt panels, they are two widths of fabric. So we're gonna sew those together into a circle. We're also gonna insert the pockets so that we can do all of that. So lots of things for us to take a look at today. I'm excited to finish. So I was thinking about, remember how I tried it on and the sleeves aren't very long and I was really trying to make the sleeves long because I've made this top a couple of times and every time the, the sleeves aren't very long. And I was thinking, I measured it the same way. I don't know if you can see, but this sleeve is very similar. I made this sweater and it has this drop shoulder. And so I just drafted sort of a trapezoid um, shape to finish the bottom of this sleeve. And it was super easy. And this sleeve is plenty long. So I'm theorizing that one, it's not stretch fabric or two, because of those gathers, maybe that did shorten up the fabric. So make sure, make sure if you do this, that you add more fabric than you need to the sleeve length and you can always shorten it if it's too long, okay? So that's just my little thing. Mary, I did not redo the neckline. My plan is to get the whole dress finished, see what I think and then redo it later. I'm leaning towards redoing it, but I wanna see the whole thing in action before I decide that, okay? So I've also, if you're joining me for the first time, I've linked the video from last week into this week so you can go back and forth and then I will edit the first week's video um, and add this week's so that people can see both parts and hopefully um, find everything when you're on social media, okay? 
So that is what we have to do. And I think the first thing is to cut, actually I'm gonna put this down. We're gonna cut those um, pockets, okay? So I need to cut, oops, that's the wrong piece. Cut four pocket pieces, okay? And I have these scraps of fabric. Let me remove this ticker. So the free, the link to the free pattern that I'm using is scrolling across the bottom of the screen, but also is in the description of this video. So if you wanna um, check it out and get all those details, you can get it there. The pocket template, we need to cut four. And you know, I almost always just do this on my rotary cutter, but I'm really just trying to um, not move the camera a million times today. I'm simplifying. So I'm just gonna throw a couple pins in here, do this old school and cut around with the scissors. We're gonna sew this all up so I'm not really um, worried about choppy scissors lines. I do love my rotary um, cutter for that and then it just is so smooth generally when I'm cutting. Oh my goodness, I had fabric cut at Hobby Lobby today. Um, my daughter's third grade class for Valentine's Day is making um, fleece tie blankets for the local, uh, I don't know if it's the cancer ward or what, but like lap blankets they can give and they're doing like kids and teen and adult sizes. So they're asking for a uh, fleece donation. So I went to Hobby Lobby, I was getting some fleece cut and that I'm glad it wasn't like a delicate fabric that I was trying to get cut or something I really cared about because it was a hack job on the fabric. So I'm thankful that I'm just going to be cutting it again anyway because it was terrible. <laughs> it was a terrible job on the cutting. So not, not great, but it was just fleece and I'm going to cut all the slight slits anyway before I pass it off to the third graders so it will be fine okay let me see all right yes yeah, so um some of you I, I see that um someone caught the brother show yesterday so we actually pre-recorded that um because Angela had to be out of town so that wasn't one where we were able to take live questions but the project turned out cute and I always have a ton of fun working with Angela. She is so easy to talk to and it's really fun to do a show with her. So that was great. And if you didn't see it, it's over. Actually, I think I shared it on my Facebook page, but it's also on the Brother Sew's Facebook page and it aired yesterday, Tuesday. So you can try and find that. I made a Valentine's banner. It's adorable and you should make it too. And I gave lots of ideas whether you have a embroidery machine or not an embroidery machine, all kinds of options. Okay, we're gonna put the pockets into the side seams before we sew up the side seams. All right, so this is obviously my uh, selvage edge and the side of my skirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim that off so that when I add the pocket, we are not, I'm gonna to have to cut all this off anyway. Okay, so we wanna cut it off on both sides. And also, if you remember, the cut of the bodice is very high waist. So I don't want my pocket right there. That's gonna be pretty awkward. So I'm actually gonna, on the instructions, I said to drop it down six inches and um, I don't have a ruler over here. So we're just gonna kind of guess and put it down a little bit, but you don't want it too low, you don't want it too high, and we still need to gather this. So make sure you're sort of taking it into account. And then we just, we'll do all the pockets at the same distance down. So one, two, three, let's just put it a little bit lower. Okay, so we're just going to do all four pocket pieces, so you can see I put the right sides together, okay? And I'm pinning or clipping that flat edge of the pocket with the side seam, and this is how we're gonna put in 
the um, side seam pocket. And then the other thing to make sure you take note of is that you pin it the same top of your skirt is the top on both sides. So I don't pin the pocket up here on this one and down here on this one. And sometimes when you have a lot of fabric, it is really easy to get that mixed up. Especially like right now when I'm not working on a big work table, I've got everything sort of um, uh, mixed up here or not mixed up, but crowded up. All right, so I'm laying this on top of each, on top of this to measure that I put the pocket in the right spot, okay? So I'm gonna lay this pocket, flat side lined up, right side lined up, and then I can just go ahead and put this skirt piece on top of it. And then I will, they will be lined up correctly. So that flat part of the pocket lines up with the flat side edge of the skirt. Okay, so there are that side of the skirt, and then we're gonna do the same. I wonder if I can cut both of these at the same time, rather than doing two different ones. I think um, this is an interesting print because um, this is custom print fabric from Raspberry Creek, so they often have bigger um, salvage edge. Sometimes it has your name printed on it because it's a custom print, but um, yes, it's lovely. And it's the softest sweatshirt fleece I have ever sewn with. So it's lovely for tops and bottoms and all kinds of things. All right, so now we need to take the first skirt that we did and uh, once again, measure so that our pockets are even. So I want the top of that flat piece to be the same on all, we're, we're putting in four pocket pieces, right? Which will create two pockets. So lay this one here. I think I got a little smarter this second side in that I'm just leaving it lined up and then we'll just measure that like that. Okay, a little bit, little bit easier. And then we're going to use the serger to sew the pocket in place, all four um, lines, okay? So you can see that there, and that's what we're gonna do. All right, so I'm gonna sew the pocket. Oh, must be the wrong presser foot. <laughs> Got too many presser feet under here. So you don't need to um, sew like a lot of extra fabric. You can really just stitch the pocket. You can do this on your sewing machine. You can do this on the serger like I'm doing. Um, this fabric won't fray, so you're not worried about uh, finishing the edges or anything like that. You're just attaching the pocket in place. Okay, so those are two of the pocket pieces done. Now we'll do the other side. over this again. Okay, this will be where the pocket is attached to the dress. So do make sure that it is all stitched in because if it's not, then you'll have a hole in the side of your dress and where are your pockets. So that is never advisable to have holes like that. If you do make this dress for yourself or a child, please make sure you share photos on Facebook or Instagram and tag me because I just love seeing what you guys are making and it makes me 
Um, so happy to see my patterns used and in action. All right, so here is one side of the skirt. Now we need to make sure that we are sewing it to the other side of the skirt and we're gonna sew the two side seams. So I am matching up that little extra that we left on top of the pocket. Then we're gonna sew around the pocket and I'm just gonna put a couple clips on the pocket because sometime with this curve, I find that um, the fabric slips easier. Then we're gonna sew down the rest of the um, side seam and it will be finished. Sometimes these sort of sharp corners here where the pocket joins the skirt, I do go back and reinforce with a zigzag on the sewing machine if I have trouble catching it with the serger. But we're gonna be heading over to the sewing machine next anyway to gather the top of the skirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sew this as much as I can. And then if I need, like I said, to um, reinforce the curved, the really curved, sharp curves, then I will do that, okay? So I'm going to pin the other side seam here, put a couple of clips in the pocket. I'll have to show you again at the end real quick the project that I'm working on to share with you guys. I think not very many of you were on when I first showed it, so stay tuned at the end. I'm working on a new over-the-shoulder bag. It's cute. And if any of you have any tips for losing the mom bag and downsizing into these cute little tiny bags that everyone is carrying, please do tell because I feel like I'm still stuck in carrying a huge bag and all those things. So tell me your tips and your wisdom so that I too can be as cool as some of you. All right, so I'm going to sew this around the pocket and then down the rest of the side seam. Oh, that other presser foot keeps getting in the way. And again, if I have to go and reinforce this, not a problem, but I just try to make this seem like straight. See that rather than, because you can't really make sharp turns. You can't lift the, the presser foot and pivot with a serger. So um, you have to just really try to soften those curves. So, so I'm more worried about just sewing the pocket together so they don't have any holes in the pocket and then I can reinforce those corners later. That is not a big deal. Okay, so again, we're just gonna try to open up this. Angle right there. I'll definitely have to zigzag that a little bit and then we're gonna sew down to the bottom of the dress. This will be the edge that I hem after I try it on to make sure that the length is good. Okay, so let's just check out real quick. Here's the side seam pocket now. It blends in perfectly. I can put all my stuff in there and it's super easy when you put it in a side seam like that. Okay, so let's do the second side. And I have it all put together, so it's really easy and ready to go. How many times am I going to step on that presser foot that's down there? That, I think it must be the other machine that's here, but it's the wrong one. Finish 
the bottom, down to the bottom of the skirt. And before we move over and gather, we're going to cut cuffs for the sleeves so that I can go ahead and sew those on and um, then sew up the side seams so we're ready to put the skirt on when we finish it. Okay, so we're gonna cut cuffs on the longer side because my sleeves are once again on the shorter side. We're also gonna use the sleeves to gather this up tightly and make a nice tight cuff, okay? So do I, is this probably a long enough cuff? Just folding over, so I cut the neckline can see where it's notched out of there and um, I think we'll go from there all right so let me see how oh yeah I can really stretch that fabric and make it's my little measure as I go here okay I don't need it too too tight but if I make it like that okay that can easily stretch all right, so we're just gonna cut out one cuff here, cutting right down the groove, and then we're gonna cut a second one, the same size. And I love to put on the cuff before I sew up the side seam, which is why I'm doing it now, so that I can fold this, sew it, and then sew up the side seam and have the cuff go on so easy, especially when you need to really stretch like this. I don't want to have to be working in a tiny circle. That stretches me, stresses me out, and I feel like I make more mistakes. So this is how I do it. I sew it while it's open like this. All right, so remember, we're going to get this started. Make sure the needle is um, into the fabric before I really start pulling, okay? So once I, I like to say, take a bite out of the fabric, once my surgery kind of taken a couple bites out of the fabric, then I can really start to pull this cuff to make sure it's going to stretch all the way along this edge. No problem. It's nice and stretchy. Don't want to stretch the bottom fabric. We're really just stretching the top. But making a match along there. And then we have this really cute cuff on there. Ooh, tickling. Um, and easy peasy to go on there. We're going to be able to sew it up and then have a cute cuff. All right. Let's do the same thing with the other side. I'm loving this color ribbing. And... I'm going to sew this one on the end of this sleeve. Oh my goodness, every time. I'm going to kick, kick that other presser foot out of the way. So you can see my right hand is really tugging on the fabric and then my left hand, because there's some resistance with the right hand, my left hand is actually giving a little bit of help to um, keep the fabric moving through the needle and not getting stuck. Sometimes when you're resisting against it with one hand, then the feed dogs can't provide enough oomph to get it through the other side. So you just, I'm just helping along a little bit. Okay. With right sides together, we're going to sew up these side seams before we do the skirt. All right. So I'm going to match up the ends of the cuff, and we'll finish that later. That is actually really thick having four layers of that cuff fabric. I think next time I order from Amazon, I might try to get a little bit thinner fabric. It's just a little thick for my liking. It's got great recovery, and actually I think it works well, but it just, the feel of it seems a little bit thick. So I would prefer to have a little bit thinner. Next time. 
All right, I don't remember, know if you remember, but I have like a half inch little notch here on either side of my sleeve, and we're just going to go along and we're going to cut that off as we go on the underarm. And that was because I gathered up the middle of the sleeve really tight, but couldn't quite get all that fabric gathered in. So not a problem. We just cut those off and then sew it down to the bottom. Let's see how this was with all that really thick fabric. Looked okay. I might take a little zigzag there to finish that off. And then we'll take my darning needle. Sometimes it hides in here. And finish off this serger's tail here. Okay. So we'll put that in, pull that through the seam. Where it came off the thick bump of the cuff and went onto the sleeve, there's just a little bit that I want to reinforce, but otherwise it's looking um, really good. And I could go over it again with the serger, but I'm afraid it's just going to have the same problem because it is so thick. So we're just going to... It and use another method. Okay. Sewing down the side seam. This one has the same issue where we are going to just cut off a tiny little bit of that pointy corner of the sleeve that we created that, you know, was our um wedge shape and down to the bottom and then we'll be able to add the skirt and it's gonna be so cute so so cute this one um seems to have caught quite well on that sleeve so i don't think we have to redo that one okay so we're just i'm just doing this as I go so that I don't forget about finishing the end of that serger tail. I don't want to accidentally cut it and then realize, oh, I never threaded it through. So I usually just do it as I go. Okay, we're gonna clip that and turn this right side out and see how it's looking as a shirt, as a top without the skirt attached. But I'm thinking it's looking really, really cute. So there is one sleeve side, adorable, adorable. Okay, how, how do I think it will be lengthwise? Looks pretty good. Okay, looks pretty good in that very rough estimate. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just move the camera just slightly so that you can see my other sewing machine while I gather at the top of the skirt. So we're just going to move it right here. Well, maybe I'll move it even further. Too many cords. Okay. Well, that's pretty okay. Let me... Um, Shut this, is that better? Okay, so you can kind of see over my shoulder what I'm doing. It's a little bit bright still, but um, I'm not gonna adjust all of it because we're just gonna come back to the serger in just a minute. All right, I have a fun foot on here, the vinyl foot, because I've been working on sewing my bag made from fake leather. And um, that's been fun to have out. Now I do see that I am almost out of thread. So if I start this, I'm going to be really sad when <laughs> this, look at that. When that runs out, I'm going to be super duper sad about that. So yes, Mary, I love the gather on the sleeve. And it actually is cute on a sweatshirt, 
on um, like this where we have a um, well, I was thinking actually just on like a t-shirt. Like you said, like it didn't wouldn't have to be a sweatshirt. It could also be just like a t-shirt. Um, it's really cute. And I'm actually seeing a lot of tops like that in the store. So I think it's also, ooh, that looks low too. I'm going to change this out because nothing worse than not being able to finish your gathering. And um, I want to be able to go all the way to the end. With this, is this a new spool of thread? Yes, it is. All right, so we're gonna thread the machine. Okay, and then I'm gonna put it on the center straight stitch and I'm going to lengthen it all the way to five millimeters, which is the longest that it goes. We need to make sure we find the top of the skirt, which is where the pocket is closest. And then I also, when I'm done here, will um, open up and see if I need to reinforce any of these corners. And you can actually see, I don't know if you can see right there, but there's a tiny hole. So I definitely will need to reinforce that. Okay, so like I said, it doesn't um, always work perfectly. All right, I'm gonna pull out a little bit of a longer tail so that I have something to pull when I'm gathering. And we're gonna sew all the way around the top of this um, skirt at five millimeters, which is the longest the stitch length can go. Make sure that you are about a quarter inch away from the top. And I wanna try to stay as consistent as possible in my stitching, because that will help with my gathering and pulling those gathers later. I didn't uh, cut this very well. So I'm actually going to sew right on the edge of this. I should have cut this off better, but I'll just take a little bit larger seam allowance when I sew the top of the skirt on because I don't want that white, which that would be like right where the skirt joins the top. That would not be a good look. Okay, so we're halfway around. Woohoo. Trying to finish all the way around, keeping the fabric sort of flat and not bunching. And also make sure I'm not letting the fabric pull my stitching off the edge because that won't be what I want. So if you remember the first dress that I made, the one that's in the pictures, I ran out of fabric, so the skirt was one with the fabric and I just thought it wasn't very full. So actually in the last week, I've cut that version down and made an adorable version for Rose because that one with the fabric on her is a lot more gathered. So that gray dress is no more in an adult size. It now is in row size and is super cute on her. So I'm hoping that I will have this one after today and then I will have another cute version for myself. Okay, now before I go over and gather, I'm just gonna switch this over to the zigzag and I'm going to reinforce these corners. Now, because this is a sewing machine, I can pivot on those corners. So that makes that really easy to reinforce. So kind of just sew along. And then when I get to that side seam, pivot. And so I'm sewing maybe a half an inch to an inch on the pocket and a half an inch to an inch on the side seam to make sure that I don't have any holes as I'm going. Okay. 
and then make sure you're back stitching at the beginning and the end so that it all stays in place. And if any of you have asked questions, I haven't looked at the screen here um, since I've been over here, but I will take a look when we head back over by the serger before we move on. All right, that should help the um, edges of the pockets to be nice and reinforced and ready to move on to the next step. Okay, so I'm going to move the camera one more time and then we will um, move on. Oh, that was just a really up close there, wasn't it? Okay, I'm back and apparently I've cut myself out of the picture now. Okay, so we are back and ready to gather the top edge of the skirt to match the bottom edge of this bodice. So eventually, we're going to be comparing to make sure that this matches what we've gathered. But I'm gonna start gathering first because uh, it will take, take some gathering before we're ready. What is this? All right, Whew. a mysterious thread. So here is where I started and stopped my gathering. And so I'm going to pull the bobbin thread there to start to gather. And I usually like to gather about half of it one way and then half of it the other. And if you want, you can always run two gathering threads and pull them at the same time. Pull the two bobbin threads at the same time. This is, um, it does make more even gathers. It also allows for a little bit of saving if for some reason one of your threads breaks, then you can still gather on the other one. But I'm playing wild and loose this afternoon and just gonna do one gathering stitch and hope that I can um, gather this whole thing without breaking it. So I think we'll be fine. It's not super thick fabric. If, if I were doing, um, yeah, a thick fabric, I, I would definitely do two, two threads. So you can see I'm just pulling that bobbin thread here with my left hand, and then I'm moving the fabric along that taut thread to try to slide down the gathers so that I can keep pulling. If I don't keep sliding it, then I can't keep um, pulling it. Kind of gets stuck. And again, I'm just trying to gather up about half of this skirt. So here's the other side seam and I'm going to just gather up to there and then I will pull the other thread so I don't have to move the gathers all the way around the skirt. That's the more you have to move them, the harder it gets. So this is going to be so much better as in a much more gathered look, which I'm super excited about. All right, I'm gonna tie this one off because we have gathered this side quite a bit. And then we'll compare to see how we're doing for the other one. Look at how much thread I've pulled out, which means that side is that much tighter. So now, let's see, is this at all the width we need? It's pretty close. Okay, pretty close on there. So we will um, do the other side till it matches and then we'll check again um, to see if we're ready to pin onto that top. This sweatshirt fleece does have a tiny bit of stretch. So we do have a little bit of leeway on not matching our gathers perfectly. If we need to, um, stretch and adjust the top, we can. Of course, we can't really stretch this once we've done this process because that gathering thread is really tight on there and does not stretch until that's been cut. So once it's 
sewn onto the top, then this, piece, the, this tight thread no longer holds the gathers, but the stitching holds the gathers. And then it once again has stretch. So if you are not using a serger, I would recommend sewing the skirt to the top using a zigzag stitch so you retain some of those gathers. Just so you have some, a little bit of give at your waist. And like if you're putting it over your head or something that you don't pop any seams. Okay, we are getting very close to having this feel gathered enough. And I would say we are gonna tie this off. Okay. So now I have both gathering threads tied. So I tie one side and then I tie the other side and then I'm actually going to tie them together because there's nothing worse than straightening out your gathers and then having the gathers start going off again where you don't want them. I want them all to be in the skirt not back on those threads. All right, so I'm going to try and even out the gathers here. Okay. I think this is going to be such a cute amount of gathering. Okay, even out the gathers and then with right sides together. So I'm just going to actually pop this top inside. There's no front and back on the skirt. Um, there's just side seams. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is match the side seam. And when you gather, sometimes, especially on the sweatshirt fleece, it likes to curl over on the top of where I gathered it. So I also uncurl and straighten out as I'm clipping. So then that makes it, then I don't have to do that while I'm sewing. Um, so then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Uncurl and clip, matching the side seam of the top and the side seam of the skirt. And then we're just going to place several clips along here, keeping the fabric as uncurled and evenly gathered as possible. I will sew this skirt with the gathers pointing towards me so that I can see that it's uncurled the whole way. You can also just clip it, clip it, clip it, like 25 clips around here to help it also make sure that it's, that, um, that those gathers are not curving the fabric over or that they're up. So I'm trying to balance here that this isn't very exciting to watch me clip the fabric and doing a good job clipping it so that our skirt sews on well. So, you know, that's a delicate balance of taking the time to do it properly and not boring you to sleep here. Okay, so almost done with this side. And I think our, um, the amount we gathered it was pretty great. Okay, so there's one side of the skirt clipped in place. Let's do the other side. So you could see that I sort of am where I worked from the side seam towards the center and then I start, went back to the other side and I worked on the side seam and went towards the center, right? So I'll do a couple clips on this side here. And then I'm going to um, go over to the other side seam and work towards the middle. And that just um, helps me to even this out. So this is where I had that extra white fabric. So I'm actually going to have the skirt extend a tiny bit above the um, top here so that we can cut off that white extra while we're sewing because that I do not want a white line around my middle. So I apparently didn't do a very good job trimming that 
edge off the fabric. Okay, so now I go back to this side, just kind of work it. All right, so I'm gonna, again, like I said, I'm gonna use my serger to sew this skirt to the top. If you don't have a serger, I would highly recommend using a zigzag stitch for this step so that um, your waistband still has a little bit of give and stretch and a zigzag is perfect for that. But the serger is also perfect for that. And I'm gonna start sewing here on the one side where I have my gathering stitches, um, the long tails for those. So we'll start on one side and we'll finish back around on the other side and hopefully it all looks great when we're done, right? <laughs> because then I can seriously model this for you. I probably won't even hem it today because um, I'm in the middle of sewing something else, but I'll hem it, check the neck, decide if I want to redo that. And then I'll take some pictures and I can post them so you can see the final product. But it was super fun to sew this over these last couple shows. Okay, so I talked about, come on. I talked about sewing with these gathers up and that is so I can continue to check that they are even and like this right here is tucked under a little bit so I'm going to pull it back out. Okay, so I like to see that I I like to see what I'm doing and having this up helps me to do that. So there may be a different preference on sewing gathers but when I'm sewing this I definitely like to see the gather side and not the skirt side. Although, I might have just cut the skirt. This would be really sad. I just noticed that it was like folded up under there. I can't watch everything at all times. Wouldn't that be nice? Like, we have eyeballs on the bottom, we have eyeballs on the top. We can just watch everything. I'll be really sad if I cut my skirt, but thankfully it's so gathered. I probably could just like iron on a patch on the back side and you wouldn't even see it because it will be gathered, gathered. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm not going to panic yet. Okay, so we're halfway around. We are doing good, sewing the gathers, keeping hopefully the skirt lined up. Here's that extra white part, so I'm trimming off a little bit of extra fabric as I'm sewing here. This is folded under. Make sure the skirt is a single layer to keep my eye on. This is why I always say I would love like a third hand in sewing, right? How easy would it be to have another hand to keep things in place, pull things, turn the dial, all of that. We're almost back around, which is good. Then we'll have the moment of truth about what happened on the other side with the skirt. Overlap another, say, inch of um, where I started. Okay, Whew, that's always stressful. All right, let's see. Oh, 
look at a little tiny snip I did because actually, all right, let's see. So this is folded up. I do need to cut this open and re-sew this little part here. Guys, get the real life sewing experience here. Thankfully, my gathers won't come undone because it will still all be held together here. And um, I'm going to put a couple of clips as I take this out. I've got about three inches here to rip out. And then I will have to figure out how to patch that hole. We'll see if it's on the front or the back. Really hoping it's on the back, but I don't know until I turn this right side out. Okay. So I'm just trying to cut, oh, Mary, thank you. <laughs> just trying to cut those stitches. I was doing so good at watching everything else, apparently. Yes, Arnell, you're not the only one. All right, so you can see I keep placing clips just to keep holding the gathers and everything in place in case they want to come out. I don't want them to come out because we don't want to regather. We simply want to re-sew this when we're all finished. Oh, more than halfway. Trying not to cut it any more than I have to. And trying not to put more holes in my fabric. Right? Oh, we're all half an inch, half an inch here. Wow, that really quite a bit got folded up. Look at how far down those stitches are. Yeah, that's not ideal. Thankfully, this whole bit right here is just folded over. And as I'm pulling it out, there's no rips in the fabric. It just was folded and stitched. So my hole is relatively small compared to how much of this actually got caught in the seam. But most of it is just folded over and not cut. So that is good, good news. So we're about here to the moment of truth of how much. Okay, so can you see that little hole right there? That's the hole. So I will probably just put some iron-on interfacing or something on it and see, hopefully, it's not a big deal to um, to fix it. And hopefully it's on the back, right? Hopefully it's on the back. All right, let's just um, re-sew this seam. Okay, that should have gotten that all into place. And now we'll turn this right side out. Okay, I, I'm trying to see, this is the back. I can't even see where that was, so I gotta find it. Where did it go? Has to be here somewhere. Anyway, well, thankfully it's not super obvious, but that hole has to be around here somewhere. So I'll have to track it down and I will have to, um, I know, you're right, Mary, I can't even find it, but I'll have to do it. Okay, I'm also noticing one other little blip here, which I think I can just cut out, but do you see this little white thing right there? So that is, 
a top of that fabric that was folded over and I didn't like get it pulled up enough to do. So I'm just going to cut that out because um, it won't, it won't hurt the seam, but, um, or you could rip out the seam and uh, fold it back and then do it. But I'm hoping if I just do that, it will blend in because there's a lot going on in this pattern. Okay. I'm going to turn the camera. I'm going to do a quick change, leave my jeans on, just put this on over what I'm wearing so that you can see my dress and that we can hopefully get a little bit of a look at it. Okay. So let me go ahead and have you guys face the door here. All right. Oops. And wow, it's super, super crooked. What happened? Okay. So let me do a quick change and then I'll walk over there and show you what it looks like. The skirt is way, way cuter than the first version with the extra gathers. Definitely would suggest allotting plenty of fabric so that you can have the sleeves are going to work lengthwise. Sleeves are going to work. Okay. Okay. Whew. So cute, right? Look at this. This is just where I wanted it to hang. And let me see if I can turn this down a little bit for you. Let's see. Oh, I can't tip it. Okay. Sorry. You can't see the hem because I, I can't tip the way this camera is. Um, but look it. So there's the gathered shoulders. Loving those. The sleeve length is okay. This is reaching the sleeve width. I like how full it is, right? Not too full. The pockets are, let me, sorry, keep going over. I feel really far away, but are in a perfect spot. They hit right on my hips where my normal pockets would. And the length, I do have jeans on. Um, the length is, I probably will cut off a tiny bit. Should I stand up here for you? Okay. <laughs> so my knee is here and I wanted it to be a little bit above the knee. So I probably will end up, end up maybe cutting off an inch and leveling it a little bit because remember up here I sewed it a little bit um, unlevel and then I will hem the bottom but look at this cute full skirt with pockets and I had to stand on a stool because my camera angle is weird but love the pocket plenty roomy and put stuff in it it feels good and structured and I'm super excited about this. So version number two, huge success, fix some of the things, neckline still feels a little choky. So I will probably end up cutting this off and yes, I will just cut it because I'm going to enlarge the neckline anyway. If I was going to keep the neckline the same, I would pick out the ribbing, but I will probably just cut it, cut a longer ribbing and add it back on. But the cuffs are good. A little thick, but so cute. So anyway, I hope you guys love this tutorial. I'm hoping for plenty of cold weather so I can still wear my dress some more. It is so cozy. It's like wearing a sweatshirt and it's going to be so fun to wear this weekend to church. So I hope you guys enjoy this and we'll make one and share photos. That's it for today. Thank you.